All right, so we are moving on to session three or lesson 25. In our previous lesson, we were converting larger units to smaller units. And to do that, we're using multiplication. And for today, we're converting smaller to larger. So we're gonna use the opposite function. We're gonna actually do division to find those. Um, so to do that, I think it'd be a good idea to review division and also how it relates to fractions because we'll be getting fractions from our division problems. And those will be helped out with this. So here's our warm up. Now, one thing I want to talk about here is um, this first number here is our dividend. That's what's being divided. And the second number is our divisor. And that's what's doing the dividing. So, um, so the format for a division problem easily switches to a fraction like this because our dividend is up top is one's being divided by two, one divided by four, three divided by two, and five divided by four. And for these over here on the right, these can be converted to mixed numbers because right now they are improper fractions. Uh, three over two can actually be rewritten as one and one half. Five fourths can be written as one and one fourth. So your answers can be improper or a uh, mixed number. The mixed numbers, though, for like if you have a word problem involving like cooking or something like that, usually makes more sense to say it as a mixed number. It just it's more standard, it's more realistic, so to speak. Anyway, let's go to page 519 and let's get started. All right, so what we're doing is we're converting um, quarts to cups. Our quart is our larger unit and cups are smaller. And remember, we know this because it takes four smaller cups to equal one quart. And you can even see it right here. Like here's, here's a quart here on the left and then the cups over on the right. And it's gonna take four of these cups to fill this, fill up this bottle here, this quart bottle. Um, but the first thing we can do is just think of it like this. It's cups equals four times quarts. And we know we're given six cups, and that's still four times quarts. So we can use all these terms to create a division problem and get our answer. So we can figure out quarts actually the first number six divided by four we know from our warm-up oops that this converts to six over four and that improper fraction can become uh, you can take four one group of four fours out of there and have two fours left over and that two fours we also know that as one and a half so again, you could say six fours um, with your cups, but normally we would just say one and a half for that instead. There'd be one and a half quarts in six cups. All right, let's move on to the next page. It'll make, again, like with most of these, they make more sense once we get more practice with them. Um, so this conversion table, um, you're actually gonna be working with conversion tables on your IXL today. So you'll be seeing a lot of these and really is just detecting the pattern between everything here. Um, like I said, you start a conversion table with uh, comparing how much of one of something is the other. And for this one, we know, um, put this here, we know one quart equals four cups. And that means for every quart, we would multiply by four. Or if you're given the cups, you would divide that number by four. If you see how that works right there. Um, so yeah, so you could do, you could divide, um, for example, 16 divided by four is four. Uh, 24 divided by four is six and so on. So. Again, you can see that the relationship 
just goes back and forth with those things. And let's look at the next example. All right, so here's where um, our answer from the beginning, we knew, we knew this, we knew it, we figured out is one and a half. But again, a conversion table is great because um, we noticed that six cups is right in between four and eight, and they convert to one cup and two cups. So you could either figure that out without doing the like the division or get it that way. This also is a great check to make sure that your answer is correct. Um, if we got three and a half or uh, one quarter cup or something like that, it would not have made sense because our answer needed to be between one and two. So again, those are um, really great check as far as that goes. Let's look at the notes on the next page, uh, which is a smaller unit, quarts or cups. Um, we know that cups are, even from that picture in the very beginning, uh, we needed four of those cups to do that. Uh, in fact, let's write that down. It takes four cups to make one quart. That's how we know what operation you use to convert from a smaller measurement unit into a larger measurement. It's division. And six cups equals that equals six fourths or one and two fourths or one and a half. All three of those have equal value. They're just stated differently. Uh, write your answer to the table on the previous page. Checked off. We did that. Uh, explain your reasoning. We divide by four. And that is the number of cups. In one quart. Become cups and quart experts by the end of this. Um, all right, down below, use what you learned about the relationship between cups and quarts to complete the table. So we have this. We basically have everything we already know is listed with these blanks. So again, it's very similar to what you'll see today on that. So let's start down here on the left. So two cups is half of four. So I know this is going to be half quart. Um, or let me do it this way. Let me have, let me write it in like this. This will be two, oops. Two divided by four. In fact, let's divide by four for all these. Two divided by four equals two fourths. Five, let me write this above so we have some room. Five divided by four equals five fourths. Um, this one is nine divided by four equals nine fourths. And this is 15 divided by 4, which equals 15 fourths. Um, and of course, these improper fractions can be listed differently. Uh, 5 fourths is uh, 1 and 1 fourth. 9 fourths is 2 and 1 fourth. It's going to make sense because it's in between a 2 and a 3. And yeah, so this is 4 and 1 fourth, which is between a 3 and a 4. Okay, so that should make some sense. Pause. All right, Oop. let me go back here. Uh, one gallon is equivalent to eight pints. Uh, describe how to convert from pints to gallons. Um, do that simply by, we divide. gallons by eight. And that's the number of pints in one gallon. All right, you guys can skip six. 
And let's do the examples here in the books, get some practice in. Okay, so for this one, I thought it'd be a good idea for us to create a conversion table of our own. Um, first things first, let's determine which is larger and which is smaller. So we've got, we're comparing kilometers and meters. Um, we know it takes a lot of meters to make a kilometer, so these are small. These are large. And it's also a good idea over here on the right is one km, one kilometer equals a thousand meters. And we worked with that quite a bit yesterday. So, all right, one long line here. And again, we're comparing, um, let's put km for kilometers and m for meters. And let's make one, two sections, three, four. So you've got five different sections here. And what I'm going to do is this third one over. I want you to put one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. And over here, put two kilometers equals 2,000. And I'll show, there'll be a reason why I'm doing it that way. OK. Normally, I start out a conversion table with one equals that. But since we are dealing with a number that's smaller than our 1,000, we've got to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to start with half a kilometer, or 0 0.5. So if one kilometer is 1,000, we know half of that is 500. And I'm trying to see the pattern here. So I know. Eight, I know 800 meters is, if 500 meters equals 0 0.5, I know 800 meters is 0 0.8. And I also know between 1,000 and 2,000 is 1,500. And between a 1 and a 2 is a 1.5. So again, detecting patterns and doing it that way is a good idea. Uh, so how many kilometers equal to 800 meters? That is 8 tenths of a kilometer. Just a different way to view it. Let's look at number 8. How many yards are equal to 25 feet? I know 1 yard. Well, let's see. Before I do that, uh, yards are the larger. And feet are smaller because it takes... Because one yard equals three feet, which means I've got um, 25 feet divided by three, and this equals 25 divided by three. I know to find our mixed number, do our do our conversion. I know three goes in here eight times. So that gives me eight and one third yards. Put a y, y, D right there. And let's do the last one here. Your IXL will not be this involved. Like it'll be more easier numbers to work with. I just wanted you guys to get some practice in. Um, which of the following is a measure is equivalent to 3,300 grams? So we are converting uh, kilograms. Remember, kilo means 1,000. So it's 1,000 grams, which means we are dividing 3,300 by 1,000. So here's, we're doing the trick like we did yesterday. You count up how many zeros, and that's three. So instead of moving our decimal point to the right, we're doing this thing where we're taking our decimal point, and we're going to do it one, two, two, three. And our answer is 3.3 .3 kilograms. Again. This is just more of an introductory lesson. We'll get a lot more practice with this uh, next week. And so our final answer here would be C. OK, so conversion tables will be what you're working on for your homework. And that's going to be.
while we wait for this to go over, that's going to be Y6 uh, conversion tables into customary units. So if you need any help with that, I will be available. And best of luck.